Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today is an interview with Ned Self of Wiki Wiki Worm Ranch in Hawaii, an island of Hawaii that I visited this summer. He got started in the worm ranch business as a hobby when he attended a workshop on composting. He is not by nature a agricultural person any more than most of us are. He is in fact a Grammy nominated steel guitar player. So he was very nice enough when I sent him an email and asked him if I could do an interview. He said yes and I went out to his beautiful property and he showed me around his worm farm, talked to me about his path into being a worm farmer and many many things in between. It starts in the middle of a conversation that we are having at a certain point after that uh, seminar that uh, I was the only one out of the class that had um, kept their worms alive. <laughs> <laughs> right, got a knack for and it. So I was like, oh, okay, fine, you know, and it's kind of been growing, and, and so I said, okay, good, let's do that, um, and uh, at a certain point I realized there's no other way to get um, get uh, worms, because some people, some of the other breeders on the other islands used to ship in our island, but they don't anymore, and I don't. You know? Really? Um, They're not allowed, or they just don't? Well, you're technically allowed, but you should take your worms, and you have to go to the ag inspector at the airport. Or, right, I saw that station. Yeah, and you got to go to the ag inspector and say, hey, I have a living creature that I want to send to another island, Yeah. and then they want to look at them all. Every single one. Every single one of them. <laughs> wow. And That's so, pretty epic. You know, I mean, it's just not working. You know? I mean, no. Um, no, nobody's got time. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, our goal is, number one, make sure that we've got worms here, and then if we get compost or whatever, I mean, we bag it and sell it, and we, we bottle up the leachate um, and stuff and sell that, too. Um, so our, our number one goal is, is to make sure we've got a resource and, and that people know about it. Um, and you know, then then we kind of do you know education and the kids and, and you go to schools and yeah. So actually, you know, the the school kids apparently like live in the morning, and I'm a musician, so I live at night. Right. <laughs> but my my buddy um, who helps me out is, is a contractor, so he's used to getting up early. So I'd say, hey, we got a school gig. You did that one. Exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so we do educational things or whatever, and, and just kind of work with the county and and um, I mean like for instance these these bins are actually uh, sort of uh, vacationing here from a couple of county offices who were doing a sort of a recycling thing contest among the county uh, but at one point they got flies or bugs or something like that and somebody in the office no. complained and they sent them off to the thing and I was like I'll take care of them until you guys sort it out so <laughs> yeah that does happen that's one of the things that people frequently ask when they get into it, and they're like, what happened if you get bugs? And I'm like, well, to a certain degree, certain bugs are good bugs, and then there's bugs that are just annoying, and then there's bad bugs. Right. Um, so we don't, we don't really, um, I mean, the thing that I've kind of noticed recently are these little white millipedes. Are um, they millipedes or are they potworms? Uh, they could be potworms. I, you know, my eyesight's not good enough, and I can't find a good enough description of what a, potworm looks like or is, you know, the way they move. I, I hate to plug my own channel, but I have a microscope and I took pictures of them because I too was like, what are those things? I'm plus, you know, over 40 and then I'm like, I, I don't know I what it is. It, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's a little white worm. It could be a maggot. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. So, so the way they move, I think they have little legs on them. Um, and, I, you know, I, yes, I would call them a millipede, but probably potworm, you know, covers it too. Um, they were getting kind of out of hand. We started adding uh, ag lime mm -hmm. to our food mix, um, right? And that seems to be knocking them down. So it's I think it's a pH level. Yeah, Even it's, in no, it's, it's you know it's fine. I mean, if, if you feel like, like a science project, <laughs> always, always feel like a <laughs> right. science project. We'll, we'll, we'll set you up then. Um, so uh, you know, but I mean, it's like of the of the weird sort of assortment of critters and creatures and mold and fungus and stuff that lives in one of these bins. I mean, it's like, oh God, what's that in that stuff? Um, there, there's like a really um, sort of foamy yellow or pink um, mold. 
Huh. Um, That's not something that we get into over where we live. Well, it's, it's really, uh, I guess it's pretty common sort of worldwide because I started figuring, trying to figure out what would happen. Because what would happen, it would, it would boil up over the top and I would come in and warm oh, it. Wow. Like this big foamy, you know, yellow or pink um, stuff build up on the lid. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Right. Um, and so it's like, it's a, it's a fungus. Uh, so it's more like a mushroom than anything else. <laughs> Apparently it's, it has enough intelligence. It will grow and move itself towards a food source. Wow. <laughs> You're kind of like, holy shit. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm not sure I want, because I always, I, I wonder about the worms, how smart they are. I mean, some of them do some dumb things like, you know, run away and dry up and become yeah, wor so worm jerky. Like, for instance, the, the, the wrap on the blue worms is that they'll just up and go yeah. know, for no particular reason that you can determine, you know. So that's never really happened to me. Um, I, I did, at one point early on, uh, my wife was like throwing away a um, uh, bag of uh, tortillas. Mm -hmm. you know? and I thought, flour, water, boom. Yeah. Right. Done into the thing. Well, so I thought, oh, I'll just be nice and, eat. and I kind of dealt them out in a nice flat little layer or whatever. Yeah. And I came out later and the worms were just boiling out of the thing. And I'm like, worm emergency, worm emergency. Um, and I realized what I had done was um, that I basically I just made a perfect burrito and sealed them in there, right? And, oh. And they ran out of oxygen. Oh. So, you know, so I'm like, oh, okay. I thought maybe it was like a feeding frenzy. No, no, it was, it, they, I sealed them in and they ran out of oxygen, so oh. they, all, they were all trying to get out. Uh, but once, once I realized what was going on, I just pulled up the tortillas and crumpled them up and put them back in there and everybody was fine. And then they all went back. Um, so I've never really had, you know, one of those mass exodus things, which makes me, you know, tend to believe, yeah, these are more red ones than blue. Um, but, uh, you know. It, the the fungus stuff or whatever, I mean, it kind of came over the course of a year, just sort of appeared in some of them, and they sort of spread, and then it just kind of disappeared again. Huh. You know, I wonder if it's certain food stocks are prone to it or or, yeah, or something. Yeah, so you know, I'm I'm always thinking, you know, okay, something came in on the the the, the, the food. Um, you know, it's like we we occasionally get black soldier flies in here. Oh yeah. Um, Do they bother the the compost worms? No. No, they all get along just fine. Because I know some people actually compost exclusively with those. So my the kid who helps me feed or whatever, he's very interested in black soldier fly, and he's been trying to create a project, um, you know, sort of raise and breed and figure out what's going on with them. My right? understanding is is that the black soldier flies are just voracious. Yeah, crazy. Um, you know, and, and you don't have to worry about the, the meat and the cheese and the, all no. that sort of stuff. You just throw it in there. Everything. And they, you know, boom. You're, oh, boom. <laughs> done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I'm kind of interested in that, but, but you know, I'm kind of like, all right, that's your project. Here's some worms or some black soldier fly larvae that came out of our stuff uh, or whatever. So he, he kind of works on that, and we really haven't done anything beyond that. Um, so do you sell your castings and worms? Yeah, so we sell castings and we sell worms and we sell uh, low leach egg. Um, and, uh, you know, right now it's, it's pretty much, you know, people, people who know about it are, are right. they're, they're always beating on my door. It's like, oh, I need some more of that stuff because my flowers, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, uh, and if I was a better salesperson, I would go out and, and uh, you know, Russell up, um, you know, some accounts, um, but but for me, it's it's really kind of a time factor, you know. I just like, um, fortunately, I've got a couple of kids who work for me now, and we've, we've got enough production going that I, I feel good about going out to the garden shop and saying, hey, I can give you X pounds, right. you know, per week and, and that sort of thing. Um, so I'll probably do a little bit more of that now. Um, Layla at the chocolate place said that she thought she'd seen you at the garden market sometimes on Saturdays. Uh, we don't usually do the weekly uh, fair, but we do the they have the uh, annual garden fair at the college every year. So we, okay. we'll have a booth there. So she's probably seen us there. Um, and, you know, we, we try to keep the flag waving. Right, <laughs> exactly. So people know, you know, hey, if, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, we can, we can help you out. Um, so that's good. Do you think that it's changed the soil here 
I mean, because if anybody's got like a base soil that is completely unimproved, it's got to be Hawaii. Um, Do you think you, like the beds where you put it in there? Well, yeah, for sure it does, you know, and, and we, I mean, f for us, we can't really do a big, big scale project. If, if, if I had, if I was running like cattle or I had a bunch of horses or something like that where yeah. we could, you know, do industrial quantities, um, right. then yeah, and, and you were raising it on a, on a sort of a crop level, um, for sure. Um, it does. We use it in, in our little garden beds that are very contained. You know? Yeah. It's like um, def definitely helps them. And the other part is is that the more worms and worm casting and, and sort of worm friendly your garden is, the more you attract other right. worms. Right. Because you actually have them in your soil here, not just because of your bins, but do they live in the soil? Yeah. So, but but those are so these are mostly Icenia fetida. The blue worms are per Perionyx excavatus. The other worm that they talk about uh, on the UH um, uh, University of Hawaii uh, website is um, my personal favorite, uh, Amenthus gracilis, also known as the Alabama jumper. Oh, really? Uh, That's what they have here. Yeah. So they say basically our native worms tend to be um, Perionyx, a blue worm, or Amenthus gracilis, you know, the jumpers, huh. or whatever. So the jumpers are definitely way bigger. Really? That's what you find when you when you dig in the garden. Uh, you know, but everybody's like, oh, I just dig some in my garden and put it in here, and I'm like, no, it's not, it's gonna not really the you same. You can't take these and put them in your garden and expect them to live. You know. I've but heard people say that horse farmers, horse farmers, ranchers, ranchers. yeah, <laughs> ranchers, we'll call them ranchers, but you know, they will ac accumulate horse debris, uh, leftover bedding, and and yeah. and that red worms actually will show up mm -hmm. and they can flip over some of their manure, aged manure, and find red worms in there. Now yeah. that's that's the mainland, that's not Hawaii, but I wonder if the same would hold true if there's some sort of remnant population that would be doing that or what would you <clears throat> find if you... It's, it's interesting because over the course of time I've definitely found pockets of worms and I, and I, and I look at them and I go, oh, that's definitely an amethyst or that's definitely a blue worm. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's obviously it becomes a, a, a real specific little uh, ecosystem for them. It's usually very moist and, and out of the sun yeah. um, and stuff like that. And, you know, yes, if you have a compost pile going and, and you've got enough moisture on it, you know, you'll definitely yeah. get worms, native worms showing up underneath. Um, so, uh, you know, um, there's, there are a lot of worms here. Um, if the, uh, the obvious place that you see them, um, just sort of on a day-to-day um, -day level, is if you're a golfer, right? If you go to yeah. our golf courses, you go there in the morning, and there's always just big little piles, piles. Yeah. Little piles of, of red dirt there, and you're like, where did that come from? Oh, worms. Yeah, those are the, the earthworms, quote-unquote. Yeah. Um, where I live, it's the lumbricus. Which is the flat-tailed worm? Oh yeah, yeah. So this is this is the um, Einstein's but or not Einstein, uh, Darwin's buddy, the one that he did all the, yeah, the, the research those, on. Well, those are is, that's what I think of as a European nightcrawler. These are a little bit different. They have a European nightcrawlers that we call. Some people call them super super reds which they look a lot like a red worm, only they are four or five times bigger. Right. And then you have the, the lumbricus, which actually goes six, ten feet in the ground. Yeah, so aren't the lumbricus the ones that they're, they're calling it kind of an invasive species yes. in like Minnesota and Michigan? Yeah, and sort of well, that and the European nightcrawler as well, because the European nightcrawler is a top feeder yeah. and is blowing through all of the leaf litter in the forest which is um, one of the reasons why the forests don't become overrun with weeds and shrubs and things like that is because of the thick, thick mat of um, debris, right. the, the leaves and, and whatnot. And you get a bunch of top feeding worms tearing through all of that and then you start getting other plant yeah, invasive you know, species. Growth, and the next thing you know, the whole thing is right. Yeah. Um, but the the lumber kiss is really deep diving, and it I get it's a weird creature. It pulls things down into its tunnel, right. and right. It, it just stays there. It just lives in this big you know trap like you. Yeah, you, they have like burrows. Yeah, but the like the red wigglers and the super red, which some people call the European nightcrawler. Um, 
they stay on the top, on the top foot and a half. Yeah. Whereas the other ones with the flat tails on them, they're one per burrow. They don't hang out together in clusters like you normally see in a compost pile. You won't find them and supposedly won't find them in compost piles. You see them living singularly in your lawn or golf course or things like that. And they're the ones that eject their castings out yeah. of, their, of their permanent burrows because it's a permanent house. Right. Um, I guess the compost worm type worm don't do that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's you know certainly so holds true around here, um, you know, and and so we probably don't have as many varieties in in sort of the natural setting, but um, yeah, we def we definitely have that going on, you know, and that's that's a major part of the thing that I tell everybody is like, okay, these are these you know are surface dwellers, and those in your garden are you know deep down, and they both got to have their environment right. right, otherwise they don't make it. So. Yeah, and because if you try and dig up, I mean, you know, as a kid, you'd go out after it rains and you'd gra gather up all those worms and then you'd go fishing. Right. Um, that's not what we have in the compost piles. Yeah, or in the compost weird, bins. You know, <clears throat> over the years, I've had people come and say, oh, I want to I wanna raise worms for fishing bait. And I'm like, man, if you can thread one of those things on a hook, <laughs> more power to you. But, um, you know, they do it. You know, so. Well, the red worms will get a little bigger, but the blue worms, you know, I think that's why some people get so irritated when they get a compost mix, which is what I think Uncle Jim sells now is a compost mix. Because you do get red worms, you do get European night crawlers, but you also get some of the what they call Indian blues or Malaysian blues, and they never get fat enough. I right. mean, um, are you familiar with like a crappie hook is? Yeah, yeah. Like the world's smallest fishing hook. I don't know that you have any fish small enough around here that yeah. that you'd be worth wanting to eat. But the the crappie hooks, you might be able to get the blues on there. You'd have to work for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wouldn't be worth your while. But I think that's why a lot of people uh, in the mainland get so irritated when they get the blue worms because they can't grow them up. They're right. they're thinking I've got anorexic worms, and they're like no. Well, you know, I, I mean, it's like I grew up in Alabama, and I mean, it's like you drive down one of those country highways, and it was like, bait shop, bait shop, bait right. shop, and you go in there, and yeah. it's like basically they would have, you know, a little Tupperware container, mm -hmm. um, you know, full of big-ass worms. Um, yeah. And if you've ever seen any of the, like, YouTube videos of, what do they call it, worm grunting? Oh, yeah. Where the guy pounds a steak in there, and then he, like, kind of has this thing, and he rubs it on there, and the yeah. worms just pop up. And right. You know, I've certainly tried that around here. I've never gotten it to work around no, here. No, I think the guy with the car battery has more luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. P puts down like a fire ring that's metal. Right. Puts one uh, side of the battery jumper on one side and the one on the other and flips the switch or whatever you do and up they come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's... <laughs> But, I mean, some of the African night crawlers that I have, some of them are easily from fingertip to halfway up my forearm. Yeah, yeah. And as big around as my pinky, if not bigger. Yeah. Um, and I've only had mine since December. Um, and from what I've seen, some people get them to be much, much larger to where they, they actually kind of look like snakes. They get so big. Yeah. So. Um, but they, they spook really easy, and they throw their tails like a lizard. Oh, really? Yeah, I had that happen to me, and I, I had to edit out the swearing because I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm like, oh, look at my really cool worm. And all of a sudden, like, it does this circle eight. It flips up in the air and breaks in two. And I'm like, and uh, I was like, just threw its tail at me. And it was just like one of those weird things. They get stressed out, they throw their tails. And so then the tail part, which is the skinniest part, will be over on the side just wiggling like crazy. And the, the bigger nose part of the worm will go slink away and, and escape. Apparently the predators will oh, go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll go after the part that's still wiggling and they will leave the you know, other part of the worm and they'll grow it back. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so around here, the geckos do that all the time. I mean, yeah, I saw I saw one on the road. It was had a little stubby tail on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, at least the the other compost worms don't do that to me. Some people are like, oh, I love the African night crawlers. They do this and this, and I'm like, yeah, but they break in half and they're kind of fussy. And if you don't have the temperature just right, and like I told you, most of the stuff that I have is is kitchen scraps, etc. Um, in the fall. I have a lot of leaves, but once we've gone through those, what do I have for the African night crawlers? Eh, shredded paper, junk mail. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, Amazon boxes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. And uh, so a lot of people are, are, like you said, they're very excited about them. They're, they're expensive. Um, but, you know, in the long run, I'm probably not going to go crazy trying to increase my population personally. But I would love to get the, the other ones more to take care of the rest of my, you know, yard. I have, I only have a what, half acre, quarter acre, whatever it is. But I've landscaped the whole thing, and I've got landscape waste out the yin-yang. And as we get older, we're trying to eat healthier. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, sometimes he's probably like, I don't know if you're trying to keep me healthy or the worms. And I'm like, <laughs> well. well I mean, you, you can see, it's like, that, that's kind of our debris field out there. Yeah. That's no, see, just, that's. I can't keep up, you know. I mean, mm -mm. it's like the stuff just raining down. Yeah. And, and it's like, okay, just put it up there, and every couple of years I'll get a guy with a back and he'll come and just kind of push the thing back together you know? and there'll be great dirt underneath it but it, it's kind of like you know what I just don't have the time or capacity to see that's what your African night crawlers would be good for if you've got the the friend that has some see if they'll eat the palm leaves and and whatnot because I know they eat all of my dead stuff all right. of my dead leaves I don't know what, if the composition is different from stuff here but when I asked the girl at the chocolate factory I was like okay so I know I purposely give mine coconut core because it tends to be a more stable bedding when I first am right. starting up a new bin. And I said, what do you do with all of your cocoa, not cocoa, cacao pods? Yeah, because, you know, the business end of the chocolate is on the inside, and it seems like it's, you know, a quarter of the fruit. Right. And then you've got all that waste. I said, what do you do with that? And she's like, eh. <laughs> And uh, I said, have you thought about vermicomposting? with worms. I said, mine will eat just about anything. And I'm, you know, and she's like, eh. but you know, she was, she didn't own the business. She was somebody who worked there. But I said, you know, has anybody tried? Because it seems like in the chocolate industry, that would be a huge, I mean, they figured out what to do with coconut. Right. Um, what can you do with the cacao? Will, <clears throat> will the worms eat it? Well, so my take on it is that theoretically, yes, they would, but, but um, certainly from sort of a composting worm level, I mean, the Africans may be a little bit better about it, but um, these guys really won't eat anything that's not pretty much fully decomposed. Oh. You know, so I mean, it's like if you put a piece of lettuce in there, you know, it'll sit there until it rocks, and then it's gone. Um, right. You know, so I, and, and um, you know, this stuff is, is great for bedding, but if you put, you know, um, a coconut husk, right. you know, it's just like, what are you going to do with that? And so this, I, I'm assuming that the sort of the smaller version of the cow bean, you know, looks like that, which is, you know, pretty, pretty solid mask of hus sort of stuff. So unless it started breaking down, yeah. I wouldn't think that the worms would be able to deal with it. But here's an interesting thing, and I don't really have it anymore. Uh, I had a guy who came up to me at the, at the garden fair you know, a while back, five years or something like that. And so he's talking to me at the fair and, and he's saying, oh, have you ever tried using millipedes? And I'm like, oh. what are you talking about? Right. Um, and so he said, yeah, 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 millipedes, are, they are uh, great um, decomposers. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you go and, <clears throat> and dig in there, I'll we, bet. We, it, and, and you'll find them in there, and, and they're basically maybe, usually tend to be about that long, and they're sort of reddish brown yeah. around here. Um, and he swore up and down that he had started uh, a um, composting project in the Caribbean or someplace. Um, and basically they would take the coconut husk and throw them in a big pile and let the millipedes go at them. And the millipedes would just take them apart. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and so he was leaving the island and he brought his millipedes over to me. Oh so, my. Here, you know, you have worms, you must know what to do with these, right? And, oh. Um, so, you know, and I had them and I really didn't know anything about them and there wasn't much info online and I raised them for a while, but I just don't think I, I quite got it, you right. know? And so they, they definitely lasted for a couple of years, but eventually they were just like, yeah, we're, they're really not doing anything. And they definitely would, would compost, decompose stuff really, really quickly and really well. Um, 
but I just couldn't get them to breed in this atmosphere. Either I hmm. didn't know what I was doing or the setting wasn't right or whatever. Um, but um, they, they are definitely a part of the ecosystem and they definitely sort of break that stuff down. So I would think if you knew what you were doing that millipedes might be an answer to, to something like that. Um, in my outside pile, like yours, I have, you know, a variety of creatures, the earwigs, the pill bugs, yeah, the, you know, millipedes, whatever else is out there. Um, but on my inside ones, I do see the pot worms. If, uh, if I feed things that are a little bit too acidic or it gets a little too wet and right. sloppy, um, I'll see the, the pot worms. But they're not a problem. It's not like they're going to hurt the worms. Yeah. They're helping. Um, and so I'm like, mm, whatever. Uh, I know my, my son is watching my cats house sitting and um, he's like, I don't have to do anything with the worms, do I? <laughs> I'm like, no, they've all been fed before I left. They're not cats. They're not dogs. Um, they'll be fine for a week without me. Um, and, you know, you can try, he's like, oh, I'm going to run amok. What am I going to do? <laughs> um, now, the strange thing with the African night crawlers, if you actually leave a lid on them, they'll try and escape. But if you leave the lid off, I just leave shredded paper on the top right. or, or shredded whatever, and they're fine. They don't try and get out. But if you try and put a lid on them, I, I don't know. They're just like, I'm going to do what I want to do. You can't put a lid on me. Um, well, you know, that's interesting. I think um, it could be. I mean, it's, um, the red worms don't do it very much. But, I mean, it's like, so, you know, I mean, I've been through pretty much every sort of variety of things. But one thing I noticed that... Um, one of my sort of science experiments um, is, uh, this is basically uh, just a 50 gallon uh, or 60 gallon uh, oh, garbage garbage can or whatever. I mean, I got it from Home Depot and got recycling on it. And basically, I just um, drilled holes through there. And so you can see these rods just run through front to back. And basically, mm -hmm. it's like a barbecue grill. Right? Okay. Okay. So, so basically, the compost is sitting on the top there. Uh, you know, I haven't, <laughs> haven't been keeping up on it, but basically it just, it's what's called a flow through, right? Right. So it just drops out of the bottom grate or hmm. whatever. And so then you just feed it from the top. Um, and a lot of times I will find the worms clustered up here. Uh, it's been so dry lately that, um, that normally this is all kind of sweaty and, and yeah. wet. Um, and they'll just kind of come up here and congregate and hang out. And yeah, where there's nice wet Yeah, so I think if, if you put a lid on the night crawlers where it's kind of feeling sort of moist on the sides, then they might go, oh, well, let's go see what yeah. greener pastures are out there. You know, so that very well may be what's going on if you try and put a lid on them. But, but um, generally speaking, the, the, these guys are the same way. It's like everything being the same, they'll be real happy to stay where they are and they won't go anywhere, you know, whether whether the lid's on or not. Um, Do you have anything to try to get in? I mean, I know Hawaii doesn't have a lot of, oh, yeah. of critters. Yeah. So, well, you don't have raccoons. What do you have that gets into things? Uh, so the chickens are... Really oh, the chickens. <laughs> that's why I have this little thing on here, because, because the chickens will just go in there and just tear the hell that's out the, of it. That's the chicken prooper. Um, Sorry for the abrupt ending there, but that is the end of the footage that I have that is usable. I wanted to say thank you to Ned for allowing me to come out and do the interview and see his worm farm and gain all the knowledge that he had to give me. If, if he is watching, perhaps, uh, then thank you very much. And I learned a lot. I thought I had a great time there and wish you the best. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and Ned and his worms. Everybody have a good night.